everyone and thank you for joining Disability Life TV. Today we have an amazing guest that you're going to want to learn a lot about. We're going to talk about Donico. We're going to talk about businesses. We're going to talk about beauty, of course. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Disability Life TV is sponsored by Connor Dental Associates. Hello everyone, my name is Yvette Pegues and I am your host of Disability Life TV. TV. Today we have a special guest and her name is Cindy. She's going to tell you a lot about who she is. We're going to spend the first half talking about all the wonderful things that make Cindy who she is and then the second half we're going to talk about how she's impacting our community. So without further ado, Cindy, please introduce yourself and pronounce your last name for everyone. Mm -hmm. My name is Cindy Donald and uh, I'm 32 years old wow. and uh, I I guess the best way to describe myself is I try to give back to the community and uh, make a difference in other people's lives and let other people know how making a difference can uh, can change you and, and make you just as proud of yourself. I'd like to attest to that. I'd like mm -hmm. to attest to that because her entire family is making such an amazing contribution to our city and our community, our, our disability community. So. I'd like to start a little bit about who you are. So tell us a little about your condition, how you identify in our disability community, and what you'd like us to know about your disability. Okay, I was 21 years old when I got injured. I was laying out in my driveway trying to get a suntan. And it was March 25th, it was Good Friday of 2005, and it was the first beautiful day of spring, and <laughs> right. I just got a Victoria's Secret bathing suit, and. Ooh tried it on and ran you know downstairs and said mom how do I look you know and she said oh you look great and Aww. so I said all right well I'm gonna go lay out in the driveway and my dad was coming home to have lunch with us right so I went and laid out in the driveway and uh, I was in college at the time so my dad was excited to come home and have lunch with us and I was laying out and my head was facing the street and he came home and on autopilot you know he was pulling into the driveway and he was excited to see me and my car was parked to the right and I was laying to the left of my car and uh, I was actually on the phone with my friend and when he pulled up the driveway I actually heard him pull up and I kind of, I didn't sit up for some crazy reason what but I think, think yeah, right? <laughs> God has a plan for all of us so right. you know you can't say your ifs, ands, or buts but for some reason I didn't sit up. I looked back I knew he was coming up and uh, he hit me with the front um, bumper of the car right where front license plate goes. Right. And at the time, I told my friend, I just got ran over. I got to call you back. You're kidding. And, um, okay. I was in just immediate shock. You know, it didn't really hurt. Um, and, you know, he jumped out of the car and was in a panic because, like I said, he was just on autopilot, you know, excited to come see me for lunch. He thought maybe he hit like a can of oil or a bucket in the driveway. Right. And so when he realized it was me, you know, he was, you know, oh my gosh, you know, just... Aww really freaking out and uh, in a panic and I kept telling him I'm okay I'm okay you know I can't feel my arms but everything's fine um, so I was left a um, C4-5 quadriplegic okay. and went to North Fulton Hospital and then I went to Shepherd Center for two months and I'll never forget when they got me a wheelchair and I could sit up in my wheelchair and get out of that bed and then when they gave me a yes. When they gave me a phone <laughs> and I could work my phone, it was over from there. <laughs> yes. So, um, wow. You know, I was in the hospital, we were doing therapy, and I was calling all my friends, and everyone had a, you know, a bedtime curfew at like 8 o'clock. Well, I talked to all the nurses and let me go to bed at like 2. <laughs> oh, and wow. So I really, um, I think it was a major deal to me to remain who I was and to not really let the accident affect me. Like I said, as soon as I got my phone and I could get my friends, and I think the major part of that was the support I had. My hmm. family is a huge support system, yeah. um, and my friends are really, really great. They say you find out who your friends are and who yes. your support is. Yes. And that people, you know, turn on you or leave you or um, give up on you. And I was very, very fortunate that my friends stuck by my side and my family Definitely stuck by my side. So I have a question for you then. Let's circle back to the moment you heard your diagnosis. So did you say quad or para? Is it quadriplegic? It was quadriplegic, yes. Okay. Yes. 
So we just want our guests, which are multi-able, to understand the difference, right? So a quadriplegic would be from neck the down. neck down. And myself, being a para, would be mostly from the waist down. Mm -hmm. So it's a T-zone as opposed to a C-zone. Is that Absolutely. correct? Absolutely, yeah. So you go from tanning. Running around, Running driving. around, driving, much like myself. We had a early adult disability experience. So Cindy understands what it feels like to jump up and run around and do a whole bunch of things, but we'll talk about how effective you can be from between your ears, not necessarily from your neck or your waist Absolutely. down. Absolutely. Because she's a wonderful example of that. But what I would like for you to share with our guests, as much as you're comfortable sharing, is at the point in which you understood that you were quad or you were diagnosed as a quadriplegic or a person with quadriplegia, tell us what that felt like. Because you're in your prime, you're in college, it's not something you were expecting. How was that? Uh, I remember I was laying in, uh, in the bed at North Fulton. Right. And the doctor, I guess, was taking blood or doing blood pressure or something. And um, I thought my arms were wrapped around my stomach. And I look over, and she's got my arm above my head. Wow. And that's when they tell me, you know, okay, you're quadriplegic. Um, you know, they didn't want to say, oh, you know, it's never going to get better. But, right. you know. Right. But it was it's to the point where, you know, it was very severe, and it was going to take a very, very, very long time, if ever, to recover. My first, my first question was, can I still have sex? Ah! Perfect! Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you brought that so, up. Because I know <laughs> our viewers are asking the same question. You know, I was 21, it was a huge deal. Of course it was. You know, I'm wondering, is anyone going to be into me? Is anyone yes. going to still think I'm pretty? Is yes. someone going to have a desire to be with me? Yes, and of um, course you're gorgeous, so that hasn't changed. You. But what happened mm -hmm. next? Um... The answer was yes, uh, yay. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's a score there. <laughs> but um, I was I was uh, I was devastated and trying to figure out how I was going to live my life. And I remember being at Shepherd Center, and my dad pushing me in the wheelchair before I could operate it with a sip and puff chair. Right. Because I drove my chair with a straw for two years, could move nothing. Now I can move my left arm a little bit, and I could drive my chair. Um, but I drove with a straw. Like you said, the ability to have your mind is yes. so important. And yes. that's why Dreams of Recovery, our foundation, helps people with spinal cord and traumatic brain injuries is because I got hit on my head and I know how fortunate I am to have my brain. Exactly. And to be able to tell somebody what I want, where I want it, how I like it, how I don't like it, right. and the differences. And to really be able to have control over your life even though you don't physically have control over your life. And I love that we segued into this because the true control of your life has nothing to do with your mobility. Absolutely not. And that's a huge, you know, awakening or realization. It is. It is. And I'd like you to just backtrack for us and explain what is a sip and puff. Because you, you talked a little bit about it, but I don't want to gloss over the fact that you've made huge and amazing improvements. And that's why I wanted to confirm that you were a quadriplegic because there are conditions where you can't, uh, you know, move your limbs from the neck down. Most of you may have um, been able to scratch your nose. Scratch your nose like Christopher Reeves after his injury. Things. That was something that... With the that hair he, on your face. Exactly. So a sip, sip and puff would be... Tell us about that. It's a, it's a straw that's operated um, by air. Right around here, right? Um, no, it actually comes up through the back of your chair, hmm. comes around your shoulder, and you know goes into your mouth. Okay. And you operate it by one blow goes forward, and then you have to suck on it once to make it stop. And then if you just suck on it, it goes backwards. A soft suck goes to the left, <laughs> and a soft blow goes to the right. Yes, I think that was fun hearing the. Uh, oh, I know. Yeah, yeah those instructions were, for those that. Those are great, great jokes. Yeah. For those. <laughs> Oh, you get plenty of those jokes. I'm uh, sure. So how long were you in a sip, sip and puff chair? For two years. Wow. And I can remember when I got home from the hospital, and I would go sit out in my driveway all the time because I was cold. Okay. When you get hurt, your temperature changes, especially with quadriplegics, very, very cold all the time. 
I'd sit outside in 100 degrees weather with a blanket on <laughs> and wanting to be so independent, you know, right, right. I would tell my mom, I don't need you, go inside, you know, and I would sit there for a minute and my straw would get away, but mom, <laughs> so, you know, Humbling. you realize, yeah, exactly, <laughs> totally, and I had my dog out there and uh, my phone was ringing and I was by myself and uh, I could reach the straw and I told my friend, okay, hold on. Because I had this fan going, and um, I, you know, I couldn't hear her. So I said, hold on, and I got out. Let me just move my chair over a little bit. So I did that one little blow, and the straw got out of my mouth. Ooh. And, yeah, I went over the little curb <gasps> in my neighbor's yard, <laughs> straight into their garage. And I'm screaming, Ooh. Mom! Luckily, she got out to me quick enough to turn the chair off before I really rammed completely into their garage, but... So we can yeah, laugh about that little, now. Exactly. Little but, things like yeah. that are just, you know, you want to be so independent and leave me alone, leave me alone, and then you get alone and something like that, that happens and you're, never mind, never mind. Did, now, but, has it yeah. happened ever again? No. Thank God for that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But the experience, much like many that you've had since, yeah. really does help you progress. And, I, and it sounds like your independence is how you were able to transition, and I want to say quickly, from a sip yeah. and puff to an actual manual power chair. Yeah. And how was that for you? Was that the goal? or That was absolutely the goal. I mean, from day one, and I think it was the determination of being told you can't do something. Um, I had a, a th an occupational therapist at Shepherd Center that, you know, I could go forward, I could go left and right, and she'd be like, well, you just don't have the muscle to go backwards, and I don't think wow. you can do that. I was like, I'll show you. That's right. And um, we practiced and practiced and practiced, and she got me um, driving this and backing up. And I can remember trying with her at Peachtree Street, going up and down the road. And, On the sidewalk. Oh yeah. Okay, um, I didn't do that. <laughs> so wow. It was a it was a long learning process, but that was absolutely the goal. And using a e stem over and over and over again helped, and the continued therapy was just huge for me and a lot of people say you have to have the muscle to begin with and that's the whole issue and that's what we'll get into later with dreams of recovery okay is medicare covering what is a functional goal right versus what is not a functional goal right and when you don't have that flicker of a muscle they're not going to cover therapy that is helping you to work to get that muscle Right, and so... <laughs> but I can speak from experience. Yes. I had none of yes. these muscles. Yes, And I had to work hard with uh, brain visualization yes. and repetition over and over and over and over again to get the muscles back that I do have. So here's, here's my concern with what you just said. And it's not about what you said, but about how we're covered as people with disabilities. We are not seen as the strongest muscle being our brain. And our Absolutely. motivator... In my case, and in cases of uh, your family, I believe, our faith. You know, mm -hmm. I could have not done any of my recovery without faith. You know, and we have in common that we were both in recovery at Shepherd Center, which happens to be an amazing Absolutely. organization. It's a spinal cord and brain injury recovery hospital. It's just over 40 years now, right here in this in this city of Atlanta, state of Georgia. So. I love that we have this in common, and we have our faith in common, and we have our recovery in common. And I do want to mm. dig really deep into dreams of recovery after our break. But before we go to break, tell me one of the happiest memories post-injury that you are comfortable sharing with our guests. I want to have Okay. Besides running into the garage. <laughs> um, <laughs> my dad and I like to celebrate. Uh, on the 25th every every year we celebrate life and you know we don't dwell on the bad parts and I would say my five-year anniversary we went to Amsterdam and Paris for two weeks uh, my parents and me and my boyfriend wow. oh, and that, boyfriend. Mm -hmm. I don't want to gloss over that boyfriend I'm sorry continue and, and we had um, the most amazing time it was the best time of our lives for sure and just being able to travel and being able to still accomplish those things. You know, my mom had always wanted to go to Paris her whole life. Aww. So I was so happy that we got to go and yeah. she got to experience those things. And that I was able to do it with them as well. 
and it wasn't that bad as far as you know accessibility and stuff so that was one of my happiest moments and happiest trips and I think that's really important to share because the expectation of people in general those who are not familiar with disability those are not who are familiar that we have a capital A in our disability because we are achieving so many things is that our life is miserable and that yeah, life ends yeah. at the disability which is absolutely the furthest from the truth so when we come back we're going to talk about dreams of recovery we're going to talk about the entire family and how the contribution to the state to the organizations that they partner with and the country is being changed by an experience that could have otherwise been mentally, emotionally, and familially just tragic. But this amazing family has taken what has happened with the, by the grace of God and made it just such an amazing uh, benefit and gift. So let's thank our sponsors, Connor Dental, and we'll be right back. Connor Dental Associates, full service dentistry, providing orthodontics, implants, laser dentistry, and general care, set in a calm and relaxing environment. Our experienced dentist and staff are here to maintain your dental health, improve your appearance and quality of life. Compassionate, professional, and informative. Ask about our core whitening system, servicing insured and non-insured patients of all ages. Located in Kennesaw, near I-75. Call today and experience the difference for yourself. Welcome back. We're with Cindy Donnell and we're talking about her injury, her acceptance, and her contribution. So we're going to start this segment talking about an ECDEM, which came up on the first half when we were getting to know Miss Cindy. So after we talk about the ECDEM, we're going to jump right into dreams of recovery. So if that's okay with you, give us a little bit of a better understanding as to what an ESTEM is, because you mentioned it in the first half, and I want to make sure that our viewers are familiar with the term. Okay, ESTEM is an electronic stimulation system, and what it is is it's a lot of people are more familiar with it in a chiropractic scene. Yes. Uh, where for pain and stuff they use it. Uh, it basically is two electrodes that will hook up to your muscles, and for a chiropractic setting. It's more for pain, and it pulsates, and it calms the pain down. And how did um, that help you? In a, stem, in a spinal cord setting, is for regenerating the um, muscle. Got it. Muscle mass. It, um, it keeps the muscle mass. Right. And it also is the, the mind-to-muscle repetition. Oh. So every time it goes off, you turn it on, you turn it to a certain um, you know, level, and where it shocks your muscle... And, like, if you can't move your bicep, if you put it on your bicep, it'll immediately pull it up. Wow. So, um, as it's doing the work, you're constantly thinking. And it goes in uh, cycles for, like, 30 seconds on, 15 seconds off. And okay. you can do it for 30 minutes, and it'll turn itself off. Wow. And so, it's just that, that repetition and keeping that muscle mass um, is just really beneficial as far as cardiovascular, um, you know, muscle memory, all that type of stuff. So it's wow. uh, really beneficial in regenerating the, the muscles and the nerves. Wow. Well, you educated me as usual. Yeah. Let's just jump right into Dreams of Recovery. What is it? Tell us about it. And where are you moving your company? Because you've made some physical moves. Yeah. <laughs> and I know you're making some other moves as well. So tell us about Dreams of Recovery. Well, Dreams of Recovery, when I first got injured, my big thing was I didn't go to the doctor and say, I broke my neck, I want a wheelchair to sit in for the rest of my life. Right. I want to be healed. Right. So therapy was my main focus. Um, I started with, you know, Shepherd Center and the rehabilitation as far as, you know, inpatient rehab. And then I went to outpatient rehab because they have a program called Day Program. Yes. But that's if you have enough muscles and enough progress to continue to go to day program. Well, I didn't, so you got to go straight to outpatient. And I went to outpatient, and then I fought and fought my way to get into this new program that they had started back then, which was called Beyond Therapy. And how long ago was this? What year? This was 2007, I Two think. Se okay. And they just started Beyond Therapy, and so I got into that program. And it is a program that's basically treats you like athletes. I mean... You're on a treadmill, you're on a bike that has the electrodes for the e-stem that hooks up to your legs, and it um, operates your muscles in the um, pattern that it would be 
to pedal a bike. Wow. So you're actually pedaling the bike through the e-stem, and so it's that muscle memory, and it's a huge benefit for uh, circulation. It prevents bed sores. It's yes. got so many, um, so many benefits. Right. And I, it's a thousand dollars a week. Wow. So it's a hundred dollars an hour, and they recommend nine hours a week. So about nine hundred dollars a week. Close enough. So if you think <laughs> of all the expenses that you have yes. just in regular life, yes. much less you know on top of a disability, uh, that's just almost impossible it's for everybody. It is. So we raised, we had fundraisers, and I was fortunate that my neighbors knew um, Bobby Cox from the Atlanta Braves yes. and Freddie Gonzalez from the Atlanta Braves. Uh, Roger McDowell from Atlanta Braves, a pitching yes. coach, Yay, and Braves. also um, U.S. Senator Johnny Isaacson. Oh, yeah. So I had a lot of support um, from the from the local community and local celebrities, and we raised um, money for myself the first two years because I didn't have a settlement at that point. Right. And the first fundraiser we did, we thought that you know we didn't know how it was going to do. We might raise two thousand yeah. dollars, you know. Maybe if we're lucky, we raised eleven thousand dollars that year. Wow! And the um, wow. the second and third time was about thirty thousand. Wow! So yeah, we had a lot of support. Congratulations! And, and going down to Shepherd Center and just being able to do therapy next to your friends—it's a sense of you know friendship it is. and you know just leaning on each other to encourage each other to do better and and really to just help one another to progress to the next level. No matter what level you're at, right. you know, it's always trying to get to the next spot. And um, it doesn't matter, you know, you being a para, me being a quad, you want something just as bad as I want something, the next thing. Agreed. So I would see my friends that couldn't afford the therapy, yeah. and they would run out of therapy. And I had one friend in particular that had gone to Portugal uh, back then to get um, some olfactory stem cells, wow. which was about $80,000, and she raised the funds to go there. Wow. She went there, and she ran out of money to do the therapy when you get back. And stem cells are something where if you don't do the recovery and the therapy when you get back, it's you might as well not have even yes. gone. Yes. So I went to the people that raised the money for me and said, is there any way we could split this money? And oh. so we split it. So we could both do six months of therapy. Hmm. And after that, shortly after that, I got a settlement. And so I could pay for my own therapy at that point. And I went to those people and said, you know, we've got too much support and backing to just not do any more fundraisers when there's so much need out there. Right. So we turned it into a 501c3, and that is how Dreams of Recovery really? got started. Really? So tell me about the name, Dreams of Recovery. How would you come up with that name? My dad is great at coming up with names. Yes, he, he is. He came up with Dreams of Recovery, and he came up with Donico Medical. He, um, he's just quick and witty. So, Thanks, um, Dad. <laughs> yes, poor Dad. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I just thought it was a perfect name. And my mom uh, helped with the logo, and it's a girl um, with a ponytail in a wheelchair. And it's got stars going over the top. Aww. So uh, it was just... Um, Thanks, Mom. Yep, yeah, Mom and Dad. And just a, it's... With us, it's always a family thing. Yes. Um, like I said, they're my number one support system and always have been. And I've seen people with no support system. And it's just so sad. It um, is. It is. And you mentioned Donico, right? The brilliant name and an even more amazing organization. So I know you. you partner with Donico. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's a family-run, family-owned business, mm -hmm. and it's is it is it five hundred one, or is it for profit? No, it's Donico. for profit. So let's talk about mm -hmm. that. So we've talked about your nonprofit, Dream to Recovery. Mm -hmm. Now, do you mind spending a few minutes talking about Donico? Absolutely not. Uh, Great, and that's how I believe we are connected. So yeah. I know Sydney's brother, who's amazing, and yeah. her dad. Mm-hmm. And my mom and my brother. Um, my brother was in the process of kind of changing jobs. He was in Chicago doing uh, some construction and um, catastrophe team kind of work for hurricanes and all that kind of stuff. Okay. And so he was always traveling on the road, and he wanted to be back here and be close to the family. Right. And my mom was such an advocate for me, um, always, always trying to save me money, always trying to get me the best deal, always trying to get me the best stuff on the market and right. everything I need. When we were first in the hospital, 
and we went home, I can remember jotting down everything in the hospital, all the brand names, everything. <laughs> and I'm telling you, when I went home, I had a hospital room wow. set up. Wow. And um, with the catheters, you know, they wanted us to wash them and reuse them and put them in this envelope. And my mom was like, absolutely not. We're not doing that. So I know where you're going with this. <laughs> It's an uncomfortable conversation for most people, but so very necessary. Can we just spend a moment talking about what is a catheter? Oh, absolutely. Because I know that's what Donico's about. Mm -hmm. But I, I just wanted to make sure we talked about the importance of catheters. There's so many different catheters. There are. Um, most people think of just, just straight Foley cath, where exactly. it is an indwelling, which means it stays in, and it has a bag, and it's very unattractive yes. and it you know has a tube that comes down your leg and everybody can see all your business exactly um but there's so many of them there's also straight catheters where you can every time you have to go to the bathroom or the restroom you just straight cath and you throw it away so, so this is for urinary assistance absolutely sorry and so donico so donico the way it started was my mom wanted i needed a catheter a closed system catheter so everything was sterile Oh, because yes. I constantly was getting urinary tract infections, infections yes. all the time. I mean, it was like I was on antibiotics one week, off a week, on a week, off wow. a week. I mean, it was horrible. Right. So I needed a closed system catheter. She went through the insurance companies and figured out a waiver form and all this where I could get a closed system straight catheter for every time I needed to use the restroom. Wow. And she advocated for so many of my friends and everything. And my brother needed a way to stay home and all this, so we decided, why not? Let's just go ahead and start a business and try for it. <laughs> and they worked and worked and worked, and uh, I promoted, and they worked. And, uh, <laughs> That's worked, too. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, it's really just been very successful, and I think it's because we treat the clients just like mm. they were me. My mom and my brother, if they run out of catheters, and we can't get it overnight, I mean, my brother will be there at your doorstep. Yeah. So they, um, and on the phone, when you call, you know who you're talking to. Right. You know, you're not getting a, an automated thing or just a, you know, somebody that's not knowing your case or, or what it is. They know you by name. Right. You know, they really, really are personal and um, really try and treat each client like family. I can attest to that because, as I mentioned before, talking catheter talk is not the most fun thing to talk about or even mm -hmm. to experience, but not just people with disabilities, whether you're quad or para, need catheters. That is another huge thing that we learned, you know, because when we started, I was thinking, okay, who are all my friends in wheelchairs? I need right. catheters and this and that. Right. Probably more of our clients are um, prostate cancer, um, women that need like bladder mesh that type of stuff maternity yeah exactly i mean there's just such a a broader market out there than than what we had even expected when we started so so when you think it's a about lot of knowledge and learning and just, exactly and like i said the different amounts of catheters there are yes. the different amounts of foley's that there are and yes. all the different um equipment that can go with them is just a huge um it's a huge spectrum. I mean, it there's is. just, it's everything. It is. And so that's also a lot of um, individuals that don't have parents or support systems yes. out there advocating for them and telling them what's on the market yes. have no idea. So that's another thing Donico really tries to do is educate and let people know what's out there and, you know, what their best option is because a lot of times they have no clue what's right. even out there. Right. And, and, and I keep hearing necessity is the mother of invention. Because mm -hmm. it's not until you need it, when you really, really need it, that you mm -hmm. even think about moving forward. Mm -hmm. And Cindy mentioned this several times about having amazing parents and family members and friends, but the beauty of Donico and Dreams of Recovery is they don't just offer services, they offer support. And I've had to learn being newly disabled or differently abled that my mantra is God, grace, and education. You know, you treat them like Jesus. You assume that if they knew better, they'd do better. That's the grace mm -hmm, piece of it. Mm -hmm. And education is to grow our world That's into... In, we, I mean, it's about inclusive, being inclusive. Mm -hmm. It's not about, hey, I'm a vet. 
I'm a para and I want the whole world to be about me. No, because mm -hmm. who doesn't use curb cuts? Who doesn't mm -hmm. use those power doors? Right. Right? And mm -hmm. who doesn't use some of the things that were created with the Americans with Disabilities Act 25 years ago for their own personal use? And much like with catheters, you don't have to be disabled to use catheters. No. But the one thing that all of these things have in common is the advocacy. And that mm -hmm. to me is priceless. Mm -hmm. So to think that I can go to Donico or Dreams of Recovery and have a dream that actually comes true towards recovery and know that someone within the organization has done it. They're not just talking about it. And to have such a strong faith and desire to support not just a family member, but include you within their family, much like Christ did with us, I just think mm -hmm. it's just such an honor and pleasure to know you and your family mm -hmm. and to see everything that you're doing. So as we close out, which I hate to do, I always mm -hmm. hate to do this, but I'd like to know two things. First, what's next? What's Donico and Dreams of Recovery doing? What should we know? How can we reach you? And then we'll talk about the D-Life Diamond. So mm -hmm. starting with what's next? What's going on with Donico and how can we reach you? With Donico, we're just growing and growing, and it's just been amazing to see the growth. Um, we've just moved from uh, Cobb County up to Cherokee County into Town Lake. And the amazing thing is we started off with one little sweet office uh, in Cobb County. And we moved and we got into a bigger building and we're about to outgrow that already. Wow. So it's just amazing to see the growth um, and the support that Donico also gives. They give back a ton, you know, they do the uh, peer support stuff down at Shepherd Center. Right. Um, we just did a, a disability link um, comedy show that they sponsor. <gasps> yes. Um, Gosh, I heard that was good. Yeah. They, um... They do a spina bifida uh, walk and roll. Right. Um, Project Walk, they sponsor their fundraisers. Dreams of Recovery, they're a huge sponsor. Yeah. Um, obviously. Obviously, yeah. right? Um, they just really give back and um, are trying to always, you know, like I said, stay up on the, on the knowledge base. We just yes. got our uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield um, in network. So that was huge. Oh we tried gosh. so long to get that. And uh, that was really, really hard to get into. And we would lose a lot of customers because in-network is a huge thing. It is. So to be able to get in-network with them was a, a great accomplishment for us. And uh, you can find us um, at donicomedical.com and find us on Facebook at Donico Medical Supply. And like us on Facebook and uh, just stay up to date. We've got a newsletter that comes out. And... That's how you can find out about, about Donico. So subscribe to the newsletter. Yes, please. Uh, and what you may or may not see in the newsletter is their support during the most recent Mobility Expo. So the Absolutely. mobility show that was here in Atlanta just a couple weeks ago was very heavily sponsored by Donico. So I always love to see them at these events because they do educate in such a wonderful way. So as we close out, there's something we call a D-Life Diamond on Disability Life TV, and it's just a nugget, you know, something that you want to now encapsulate all of what we discussed today and share. What would you like our viewers to walk away with or roll away with as a result <laughs> of having you as our special guest today, Cindy? Well, I just want to thank you for having me on the show. This has been a, a great um, opportunity and just really, really been a fun time. Likewise. Um, with Dreams of Recovery, I just want people to know that you can find us at dreamsofrecovery.org. We do fundraisers. We're having a fall gala um, October 27th um, at the uh, Pavilion at Old Town in East Cobb. And you can find that on the website. We're also on Facebook at Dreams of Recovery. Um, just look up the Cindy Donald Dreams of Recovery Foundation. Uh, we're doing, we're trying to really uh, meet more people and get more donors and build oh, yes. more relationships. At our fall gala, we're going to have Barry Loudermilk, the congressman, speaking. Yes. He's a wonderful speaker. I'm yes. so excited to have him. Congratulations. I saw him at the chamber speak, and my, uh, my guest there, Abra um, Auto and Body, is one of our huge sponsors. Okay. And uh, they were there uh, receiving an award for their uh, business support for our foundation. Okay. And the girl turned and said, she, he should run for president. <laughs> He's an amazing speaker, so wow. I know that's going to be a really good um, event. But also, just to anyone with disabilities out there, just know that, like, like Yvette said, it's all about your brain and what you want to achieve in your life. 
it's not about your physical ability or anything like that. It's what you put your mind to and what you want to do, you can accomplish. And I didn't mention this, but I mean, I went back and finished college. There's so many things that are available to you. And I've heard people say, I'm not going to do this until I walk again. I'm not going to do that until I walk again. And I guess the closing that I would want to end in is saying, if I walk again, I want to be able to say, I had those 11, 12, 15 years in that chair, and I did scuba diving, and I did you know, snow skiing, and I went fishing, and I went water skiing, and I went camping, and I went hiking, and I did everything right. and lived it up in that chair because you're not going to have another opportunity to be in a chair. And some people don't have that. So right. I think live life to the fullest at the moment it's in because you might not have another opportunity to do it. And life in a wheelchair is not miserable every day. No, it's not. I have a wonderful life. I love my life. I'm sure you have a wonderful life with your smile and you're <laughs> beautiful. So I think um, just put your mind to it and you're not limited by your physical ability. Life doesn't end at the point of the disability, and Cindy Donnell mm -hmm. has made that so incredibly clear. Live your life daily instead of waiting for life to happen. Make it Absolutely. happen. Absolutely. Is that fair to say? Totally. We love you for watching. Thank you for joining, and tune in again on Disability Life TV. Thank you.